Sir Keir Starmer has pledged £84 million pounds, uh, to Africa to stop illegal migration at source. Let's have a listen to what he said. Today, so today I'm announcing £84 million pounds of new funding for projects across Africa and the Middle East. That includes humanitarian and health support, skills training, help with job opportunities and access to education. Now, the reason I think this is a really interesting, um, Tobias, is, uh, and I'm going to give you my take on this. Uh, first of all, 84 million quid sounds a heck of a lot to the average person, but it's basically coins down the back of the sofa. I don't think it's going to suddenly stop uh, illegal migration at all. Um, second of all, so much of this illegal migration happening from Africa is being stirred up by uh, groups such as the Wagner mercenaries working at the behest of Russia, destabilising regimes, lining their pockets with this human trafficking, and at the same time knowing that the end result is destabilising and dividing our communities. But also, you know, I've worked a lot across Africa. I've worked in Kenya, I've worked in Ghana for governments there, for their leaders. And people like Addo in Ghana, who will probably soon be the outgoing president, made a big speech saying, we're fed up with the West trying to give us handouts and saying this is all all right. If you don't want people coming over on boats, trade with us properly. Do business with us properly. Treat us like adults. Don't, on one hand, scrap tariffs, let companies like Nestle rape our natural resources and then give us a sticking plaster when our young men want to leave for richer countries. I mean, what do you say about this 84 million to stop illegal migration at source? Can it work? Well, it, you cover so many important issues here, which is fundamentally about our relationship with the, the international community. I'm of the view that Britain has a reputation across the world in stepping forward, in helping countries that need help, that need support, particularly those who are connected to the Commonwealth, for example. When we vacate these countries with our support, with DFID aid, for example, Libya, you mentioned the Wagner Group, they then move into that country and make it more unstable. Guess then where those people who are then fleeing for their lives go to, they go to Europe and then are including the UK. Somalia is another example. When we pull our support in places like Somalia, Al-Shabaab, terrorist groups then move in. The DRC is the best example of us withdrawing our programs from there. Guess who moves in there? China. And they have a very, very different agenda, a scant interest in human rights, but they're going to rob the country of its natural resources. I simply make the case that because of our international leadership and our soft power, we can rally other countries to continue the programs that we've been doing that keeps these countries stable. So I, I'm afraid I understand the call to say, my goodness, we've got problems here in the UK. Let's not spend any money abroad. I simply make the wider point that when we ignore that, when our leadership then goes missing, other countries don't follow us. We then build up problems which then come to haunt us in the long term and cost us more money. And from a trade perspective, we then remove the ability to trade with these countries because Russia and China have then dominated, as they're doing, Africa, which was a, a continent that we had such great connectivity with. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. But I don't think this is about sending, you know, giant-sized charity checks to teach uh, kids about, uh, you know, uh, LGBTQ stuff. This is uh, what I think should, frankly, be a bit like a Marshall programme, as far as I'm concerned. And look, you know, I, I, I think we're on the opposite side of the fence on the Brexit debate. But one thing that turned me into a Brexiteer was living in Africa because I had seen the corporate cartel of big business going in and basically doing all the negotiations for uh, economic economic partnership agreements with uh, bodies such as ECOWAS and Africans were really annoyed about this and what happened in the aftermath and it was so predictable is uh, as a result of losing a load of uh, GDP from tariffs which had been stripped and not having a fairer relationship of trade with Europe in fact more of a neo-colonial one they gave up on us they let the Chinese in, and now, as a result, China and Russia control all their mineral resources. They've built all the railway tracks and stuff and the motorways, and then now they have the whip hand over Africa, when we should have been using a Marshall programme, which, frankly, would have fed back into our own economy. It would have given us work. It would have created jobs here. We've massively dropped the ball here. Where do we change this? Yes, I mean, again, I, I fully agreement with you. I was Africa minister and I saw some of the daft programs. I tried to stop them because they made no sense whatsoever. Supporting infrastructure, increasing trade, strengthening the bonds with Britain. That's exactly what we should be doing. Those ties, I'm afraid, have been severed or broken. 
and China has moved in. And you, you have very eloquently described the situation there. It's worse than that because all these countries, dozens of countries in Africa, are now indebted to China. Yeah. So they will never challenge China at the United Nations, for example. They won't actually stand up to China and what China is, is doing. What they're doing is now subservient to China. And our world is splintering. I make this really clear. We're splintering into two spheres of global influence. The West, which is decreasing in size, and then the other interpretation of our global order led by China. And it's Africa and indeed Asia, where many of these countries are then choosing to side with China uh, simply because of this indebtedness. And it goes back again to having responsible cognitive programs which absolutely support the country, the people there, and strengthen our, our bonds with trade specifically. I do hope that we can reflect on this. COVID, other things you know, factored into this, and Brexit too as well. It took our eye off the ball, if you like, and what we were doing across the world. But the world is changing very, very fast right. indeed. And China and Russia have taken full advantage of the void that we've left in our interest uh, in the international community. Yeah.